Everything you've been told about Scott Pilgrim is a lie. Well, 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 here I am looking to just enjoy some nostalgic Scott Pilgrim action for a movie that was released 13 years ago, and I hear the entire cast is back. I'm like, wow, this could be enjoyable. Perhaps it's like a expansion of the original lore. Maybe it's a new take on the, like it's a new story, expanding the characters, maybe doing something completely different. No. That's not what we get. What we get is a 100% lie. Now, just as a reminder, people, there are spoilers from here on out. Just want to let you know. Besides that, I am the man you may know as Z from Our Reviews Will Kill You, the podcast that uh, we review all sorts of news reviews, movies, TV shows, and all that good stuff. But anyway, we're going to talk about Scott Pilgrim because... You've been sold a bill of goods. I've been sold a bill of goods. I feel like I've been lied to. And here, I'm going to show you some proof. And in the, I'm also going to tell you how it's not fresh. It's not daring. It's not interesting. It's just He-Man revelation. And I have proof. So uh, strap your boots on, folks, because uh, away we go. Uh, first, we're going to talk about... We're going to look at Variety that says something. And they say... New Scott Pilgrim anime series puts a fresh, t- fresh, self-aware spin on the cult classic. Now, don't get me wrong. There are things I like and things I don't like about this. I'm going to lean mostly towards the don't like about it. Brian Lee O'Malley, who actually did the uh, manga, I guess, or, or whatever you want to call it. He does like a, a whole like drawn thing that, that Scott Pilgrim was initially based off of. And Edgar Wright directed the movie. Well, this is produced by Edgar Wright. And uh, all of them should be ashamed of themselves because you're plagiarists who ripped off He-Man. And He-Man sucked. So guess what? Scott Pilgrim also sucked. I watched all eight episodes. So here's what it looks like, folks. And I just want to show you the Rotten Tomatoes. Oh my God! I can't believe it. The the the, the critics—they love it. It's ninety-eight percent. Oh my God! I'm so shocked. How is that even possible? Seventy-seven percent from the audience score, and probably going to go lower because they're not showing how many people actually watched it. Well, what does Variety have to say? Oh, just in case you were wondering, this is not to criticize uh, Scott Pilgrim. But simply to note, it's a story very much of its time. Uh huh. Uh huh. He partnered the the writer partnered with another writer, who clearly ripped off He Man, but used his original artwork style. Guess what? Uh, for everyone else, Scott Pilgrim takes off is not. It turns out about Scott Pilgrim. That's right, folks. They did it again in the first episode. Scott Pilgrim dies. And then it becomes Ramona Flowers' story as we get to watch her talk about her feelings for the next four episodes about how she feels about her ex-boyfriends, you know, the seven ex-boyfriends that Scott had to defeat. Well, she don't have to defeat them anymore. This is about a woman's self-discovery. Instead, you know, Ramona Flowers has gone from the somewhat passive object of Scott's aspirations partners past and present literally fight over her to a woman on a quest of her own oh my god i can't it was this was bad folks like i said there are some cute parts to it i do think it's interesting if i want to compare it to the original just a tiny bit in the original one i thought that scott michael sarah's character was a total dill hole um, not worthy of any of these chicks getting with him. Like, he was kind of a scumbag. He's dating a 17-year-old, and he's talking about making out with her, and then he meets Ramona Flowers. Didn't like any of that. I thought that was a little weird. I, I, I Like, I like the movie, but I don't love the movie. Like, I'm not in love with it. And, uh, you know, there are th- aspects of it that I enjoy, but for the most part... You know, look, it's a cult classic, but it's not like the greatest movie ever. You know, there's a lot to not take out of it as positives. But uh, 
overall, it's fine, just fine. But what I and what you do get is you also get like the roommate who's p- played by um, Wallace is played by Kieran Culkin, who I think is great, is not that much of a scumbag. He's just tired of Scott mooching off of him. And this is complete scumbag who is force converting men over to uh, gay relationships. But then women are being converted back from being lesbians into straight relationships. I don't understand what's going on here. I don't know what the message is. None of it makes any sense. It's really not that good. It's kind of boring. Even the fight scenes themselves are not that interesting. There are times that I did like it, but overall, I'm going to give this like a D. Um, and I can't. I, I even I can't prove it yet. But I'm going to say, not they advertise that all the voices are the same. But there are an awful lot of times where I noticed in the credits some of the voices were different for the main characters that they had changed. Now, Elizabeth Winstead, takes, she's in it the whole time. Michael Sarah's only in it for three out of eight episodes. And um, who else is in it? The, the, some of the original actors are in it. But some of them only have like one or two lines. Kieran Culkin's still in it. Uh, some of the others are still in there. But I feel like it says like... Uh, Jason Schwartzman still in it. It seems like Ellen Wong is still the same person, but but like uh, especially Brie Larson sounds like she changes. And I know for the song she doesn't sing it. They actually have Metric sing a song that she does. Um, yeah. So then we take a look at let let's let's go back here and uh, so by the end of it though, and here's where I want to ha- I'm gonna make my He Man comparison right. So I have some things I'm going to show you here. So Scott dies in the first episode. She spends the next four episodes talking to all her exes, trying to figure out because he's in the afterlife or something like that. Well, guess who the villain of this is? And I predicted it from the beginning when she couldn't figure it out after like the first boyfriend. And I was like, oh, wait, it's none of the boyfriends or not even boyfriends, just the exes because she does have a girlfriend. It's Scott. Scott's the villain. That's right. Scott from the future. Very old Scott. And those are like some of the things I like. I did like the different Scots, and I liked Will Forte, and I liked uh, Finn Wolfhard plays Scott as well. <clears throat> but here, you, it's like they claim it's an alternate universe of Scott Pilgrim. Why call the show Scott Pilgrim? It call, it's called Scott Pilgrim Takes Off. Like maybe because he takes off of the show, like he's not in it. And the opening credits have Scott pilgrim in it and michael sarah is first billing so when he disappears after the first episode stop calling it scott pilgrim just call it ramona flowers finds herself how's about that how's about we change the title so we look at he-man what's a revelation from he-man i just wanted to remind you of what he-man looked like strong powerful whammons taken over right is he men's health is he-man dead Oh my God, He-Man doesn't die once. He dies twice. The first death is in episode one. And anyone who's going to listen to, uh, who's going to copy He-Man, that's just so stupid. Why would you do that? Kevin Smith is clearly lost the, lost the, the, he's lost the the page. He's, 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 He's lost his mind. He's, he's gone off the reservation. He doesn't know anymore. So, guess how Ramona wins, how she defeats Scott, so that she can have what she wants, because she's strong whammon, and, you know, the the one thing that I thought was kind of interesting is she's extraordinarily selfish and self-involved. Every single morning during this whole thing where she's trying to figure out who, who, you know, who she thinks, like, took Scott into the afterlife or did whatever with him or made him disappear or killed him, whatever... She goes and she dyes her hair every single morning. It's this long process, and they show it every episode how she dyes her hair. Could she be any more self-involved that she takes, you know, like an hour every day to dye her hair? And then at the end, she's the bestest. She has no flaws. She just has to reconcile that she needs to love herself. She needs to affirm herself. They literally copy this scene where Tila becomes... The Sorceress, let's watch, because I can't show you the Scott Pilgrim thing, because I'll get pulled, but I can show you this old piece of dog crap. 
Look, she hugs her mom or herself or whatever you want it to be. And she it's becomes all powerful. Uh-huh. So amazing. She just needed to be affirmed. She just needed to be told how strong of a, there's no one in your way except for yourself because you're the bestest that's ever been bested ever. You're so great. You're the all powerful. She's now the sorceress, more powerful than any living being. It's the power. I'm going to use the power to protect all of Eternia. Yep, cuz you're the strongest woman ever. So, literally, the same exact thing happens where Ramona, there's a past Ramona, or there's like current Ramona, and there's a future Ramona, and they just hug each other. And because they hug each other, and she sticks with herself and what her gut tells her, that she overcomes Scott and becomes a god. It's amazing. Wonderful. So, anything you've been told about this stupid show is a lie. If you thought you were like, hey, I like nostalgia a little bit. Scott Pilgrim wasn't a bad movie. I'd be kind of interested. Oh, this is the animated origin story or something like that. Maybe that's cool. Maybe they might tell us how Scott's capable of fighting people. Perhaps that's a thing. No, you're not going to tell us that. And the only thing that Ramona had to overcome was her own insecurity with relationships because she just, everything she loves, she walks away from. Her struggle is so real unbelievable i can't believe i watched this hunk of garbage like i said it's a d there are some things that are take but the best part the things i liked they took kieran colt uh kieran culkin's role as wallace and made him into a predator that's not cool i thought we were it's it's, it's okay if you do it to gay people where you're a, you're literally a sexual predator is that the way this works now so they took his character make made him despicable and then tried to make all the villains heroes like they always did. Like, this is just so stupid. What a waste. If you bought into this nonsense, let me know. I can't even, like, I don't watch it. Uh, if I had, I wish I had clips, I would show you. If, you. if enough people watch this, maybe I'll skulk the internet and I'll find clips to show you just to prove that I'm right. But again... He-Man dies in episode one. Scott Pilgrim dies in episode one. By episode eight or six, I think it's six in He-Man and eight in Scott Pilgrim, Ramona hugs herself and becomes a goddess. Tila hugs herself and becomes a goddess. You frauds. You plagiarized He-Man from Kevin Smith. You absolute frauds. Anyway, love all y'all. Thank you for listening to me. Get angry about a stupid cartoon that pissed me off because it wasted my time. What a waste. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. We do have a podcast. You can catch it. It is super awesome. You can catch it for free on iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, or right here. We live stream it on YouTube. Come join. We can uh, super chat. You can also join. Become a member. Get your doctorate in the Orc Nation. Orc you. We love y'all, baby. But I'm on to the next one.